And now, uh, Vin Weber, who is going to uh, defend his party, defend conservatism, uh, and, uh, um, and offer his own uh, diagnosis. Well, I actually uh, <laughs> agree with most of what everybody at the table said. And I, and I, uh, I do think we're entering a new era of conservatism, and we conservatives need to go through a very substantial rethinking of, the, of where they are and, and figuring out how the new era uh, requires new responses. So I'm, I'm not defensive about anything. I would make a couple of points. I just, they're sort of at random almost. Um, let's, re let's remember the conservative movement really got, got uh, going institutionally in the 1970s. I mean, yes, Buckley formed the National Review in the 50s and Goldwater ran in 64. But all the organizations that we think of as the conservative movement were formed in the 1970s, and they were formed explicitly, this goes to a Mickey Edwards point, explicitly because conservative leaders looked around and they thought the Republican Party was a ball and chain around their neck. You'd look at the, you'd look at the polling and see that, that uh, by two to one, the country thought of itself as Democrats more than Republicans. And by about the same margin, they thought of themselves as conservatives as opposed certainly to liberals or even in, in that area as opposed to moderates. And so you had leaders like Richard Biggery and Paul Weyrich and all of those folks who very much uh, in the 70s, explicitly a lot of them, Howard Phillips, talked about forming a new party uh, because the Republican Party was not succeeding and the Republican Party uh, and, and the conservative label itself had a, had, had a much stronger resonance with people than the Republican Party. I think that Reagan's. I, I think that Reagan's success was in sort of diffusing this notion that there needed to be a new, new conservative party, and basically bringing those folks into the Republican, making them feel that the Republican Party was welcome. And so, I, I'm as to the argument between Mickey and David over do we care about the Republican Party? I, I agree with both of them. <laughs> I, 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 can, I care about the Republican Party. He's but one a of the, yeah. <laughs> But one, of the, but one of the reasons I care, among the reasons that I care about the Republican Party is because it has changed itself over the last 30 or 40 years to be a party based on, on conservative principle, and I think that that's, that's pretty important. Uh, most of what I'm hearing from people here, and I, I agree with a lot of this, is, is talking about, or much of what I'm hearing, is talking about the conservative movement or, conserv or the Republican Party. Uh, tr struggling to come to grips with the fact that the, the Goldwater rhetoric, I can't remember which of you mentioned it, it might have been Ross, uh, simply was at variance with the realities of governing the country. One example I like to use, I, I was only 12 years old, but I was a teenage Republican when Barry Goldwater ran, and I, I, that's the year I got the bite for politics and at a premature age, probably. But Barry Gold, remember Barry Goldwater, Barry Goldwater ran on conservative principles, all right. He, he wanted to privatize Social Security. He wanted to abolish farm subsidies. He wanted to sell the Tennessee Valley Authority. You never heard any of those things from Ronald Reagan when he ran. There was an ad, a, a tacit admission by Ronald Reagan that people want a role for government in their lives, even while clinging to a set of conservative principles. Uh, and by the way, as long in, in this institution where I've been a senior fellow for 14 years, I think now, Larry, um, it's worth noting that uh, Ronald Reagan was a great friend of Hubert Humphrey. In fact, one of his, a close friend of both of those men insists to me, insists to me, that uh, in 1968, Governor Reagan cast his presidential ballot for Hubert Humphrey, not for Richard Nixon. Uh, but I don't know, that can't be proven or disproven, but th there is no doubt about the fact that Ronald Reagan was an admirer of Hubert Humphrey, had a standing invitation to allow him to stay at the governor's mansion whenever he visited California and Sacramento. Um, you can't be a huge admirer of Hubert Humphrey and not believe that government has some role in people's lives. And, and it seems to me that what Republicans have, have at times succeeded at and at times failed at is, is wrestling with that issue. We are the party of limited government, of lower taxes, less spending, market forces, less regulation, and yet understanding that people want the government to do things that they certainly didn't want them to do 50 or 60 years ago, that the times, the era has, has changed uh, quite a bit. And, and that seems, it seems to me that one of the things that has happened of late uh, is that we have allowed sort of that 1964 rhetoric to become our governing principle, which means there's no governing principle. Uh, I think, if you want just a political shot, I think one of our problems over the last you know, decade or so has been that we didn't have political leadership 
that was broadly representative of the country. I don't mean that people like Tom DeLay and Dick Armey and Newt Gingrich are bad people. They are all friends of mine. I think they're by, by and large good people. But they come from a distinct part of the country with a very distinct uh, philosophical point of view that is not necessarily represented where I am from or in most of America. And I think that, that that hurt our party in very substantial ways throughout the 1990s. And we are now struggling to try to come to come back. I will say, however, that, you know, and I shouldn't defend your old boss against you, but I think that Bush tried very hard. I mean, he, he believed in this notion of compassionate conservatism. It might not have worked out, but he was trying to wrestle with this issue of how do you maintain adherence to conservative principles while accepting uh, a role for government in areas that, that, that old line conservatives never would have. I just don't think that it, it worked out. I also would say, last point, because I'm anxious to hear some more from these folks. Uh, I, last point I'd say is, yes, we need to rethink conservatism. All these folks are making important contributions, as are other people. Ramesh Panuro is writing some stuff that I think is very interesting. But I also think you can overstate the collapse of conservatism in this country. Not to be too mundane, but we lost the 2006 election largely because of the mismanagement of Katrina, the Iraq War, and, and corruption in the United States House of Representatives. No one of those really represents a philosophical failure on the part of the Republican Party. It led to a victory for the Democrats. Um, and before we wholesale reinvent what has been a fairly successful philosophy, I think we should keep in mind the, the causes of our current unhappiness.